Sandy, would you call roll call, please? Council Person Bruni? Here. Bruni? Perry? Yes. Hampton? Here. McKinty? Here. Thank you. Since we're still in a discussion and we have a lot of information about how we are going to proceed with our order of meetings, I would like a motion to suspend the voting procedure for tonight. I would move to suspend the rule, use of Robert's rule of order to proceed with the discussion, motion discussion format that we've used the last two meetings. Okay. I'll second it. Motion has been made to second it to suspend the Robert's rule of order voting procedure for tonight's meeting. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brady? Yes. Harry? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Um, item number two. Do any of the council members have any conflict of interest on any of the items on the agenda this evening? Um, I may have one on uh, 7A. Okay. Okay. And you'll suspend yourself from anything having to do with that particular gotcha. item. Okay. All right, then we'll move on to item number three, consent of agenda. A, approval of agenda, B, approval of the minutes of the May 27, 2014 Council meeting, C, claims, D, consideration of approving a five-day outdoor service privilege subject to use on June 14, 2014, or for the Kids LLC doing business as Sadie Pistro and Q Williams. E, consideration of resolution number 2014-11 entitled Resolution to Fix a Day for a Public Hearing on the Possible Vacation and Sale of City Property. And F, consideration of approving Sac City Main Street Parade Permit for Sac City Chautauqua Days Committee on July 4th, 2014. Do we have a copy of the 5D permit? There, there is not a, a paperwork. It's an online application. Oh, okay. <coughs> Motion has been made and seconded to pass the consent of agenda A through F. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Granny? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number four projects A, Sac City Facade Project. Number one is consideration of resolution number 2014 13 entitled. Resolution authorizing the establishment of a short-term financing loan agreement and a principal amount not to exceed three hundred thousand used for the city Sac City facade project within the general fund account for fiscal years 2014-2015 and 2015-2016. I believe this was discussed earlier. This is just putting it into a formal resolution. Under, I, I guess I was confused a little reading this, which doesn't take much to confuse me, perhaps. Um, under Section 2, under the now therefores, would it be clear to say a schedule for the general fund to repay the local bank? Because it reads, it's almost, it looks like we're almost repaying the general fund instead of the bank. Maybe How would you choose to reword it? If the council authorizes the city administrator to establish a repayment schedule for the general fund to repay the local bank. Adam, <coughs> do you want to approve that? That would be. I have no issue with that. No. Would you see, say that again, please? The council. I'm inserting the word repay between two and the local bank. Fourth, this is uh, section two, um, the second line, putting the re word repay in before the last three words. The second line, repay before the last two words. Last three words. In. Okay, in section, okay, what? section two. Oh, I get you. I'm on the wrong page. I'm sorry. I was not even on that page. Excuse me. Okay. Never mind. I got it. Okay, with the um, change that reads, the council authorizes the city administrator to establish a repayment schedule for the general fund to repay the local bank. 
Okay, I want that. I was looking at number one. Never mind. Um, anything else you want to discuss? I would move to uh, pass resolution number 2014-13, a resolution authorizing the establishment of a short-term financing loan agreement in the principal amount not to exceed $300,000 used for the Sac City facade project within the general fund account for the fiscal years 2014-15 and 2015-16. I'll second it as amended. As, as amended. amended, yes. And I'll second it as amended. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve resolution number 2014-13 entitled Resolution Authorizing the Establishment of a Short-Term Financing Loan Agreement in a Principal Amount Not to Exceed 300000 used for the Sac City Facade Project within the General Fund Account for Fiscal Years 2014-15 and 2015-16 as amended. Would you call for a vote? Councilperson Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Rennie? Yes. Rooney? Yes. Harry? Yes. Motion here. Thank you. Um, I have four projects. B, Sac City Airport Equipment Improvement Project. Number one is consideration of approving FFA drawdown. Number two, in the amount of $2,857.50. That makes it 90% of the I'll, I'll make a motion to the approving the FFA drawdown number two in the amount of $2,857.50. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the FFA drawdown number two in the amount of $2,857.50. And it was FAA, -A, <coughs> not FFA, I caught myself after I said it. <laughs> Bill said it too, don't feel bad. Did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I was just copying you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the motion has honest. been made and seconded. <laughs> Would you call for a vote? Councilperson Mooney? Yes. Harry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. The Sac City Airport Equipment Improvement Project number two is consideration of approving Olson Associates bills in the amount of $2,175 and $1,000. Also, move to approve the uh, Olson Associates bills in the amounts of uh, $2,175 and also $1,000. I'll second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve Olson's Associates bill in the amount of $2,175 and $1,000. Call for a vote, please. Councilperson Rooney? Yes. Perry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item number five is citizens' opportunity to address the council on items not on the agenda. Would there be any this evening? May I? Yes. Ready? Yes. Okay. Um, Denise Upsall. And I just wanted to address the council concerning the Freedom Rock project. We are diligently trying to get as much as we can ready by the 4th of July. And if you've driven by recently, you will see that we've done a considerable amount of landscaping down there. We have a um, water issue, which I'm not sure where the city is with that. I'm not aware of it. So. Okay, but it only have a leak or whatever, but that Ross will take care of that. Um, my concern is not, it's not a concern. I'm updating you. I'm just giving you an overview of what's happened. Um, we have two of three flagpoles donated, one from the Bob Shuffler family right, is donating the 25 foot in his name and another person a former citizen of Sac City is donating enough money for a second flag flagpole and because they are commercial flagpoles and the one is 25 and the other two are 20 they're approximately a thousand dollars a piece which is um, considerable for us Ross and I don't have that kind of money right now um, so what we're looking for is one more entity to s supply one more flag pool so that we will have the American flag, the Iowa flag, and um, potentially POW MIA flag is what we're hoping for. 
we have gotten approval from or um, donation from um, American Concrete to do the setting of the pool poles, and they're also going to do a slab under each of the two benches to give them some stability. Um, we have placed as many of the red rocks, uh, red stones from the other building as we feel we are going to need. But if there is any desire you to place them in any other location in Sac City for continuity or <coughs> because you don't want to see them in the landfill, which was our motivation. Um, and if somebody wants them, just contact us and we're pretty much done with what we need, except we want one more and that's it. And so they are available, and they are historical because they came from a, a significant uh, early building. So if somebody wants them, they're available. Um, but uh, we have, uh, we are hoping this weekend with the help of my older brother to, am I out of time? No. Oh, no. to. She knows somebody that wants your rock. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can have it. Um, but you have to move it because they are heavy. Um, we're hoping to get some of the interior um, stud work done this weekend. My brother can do that, so he's going to help. And we have ordered new windows from Dwayne Clausen, wanting to keep as much as we can in town. So the, I think it's going to be two to three weeks, so it's going to be really, really close to the 4th of July before we get in. But, um, updating you just on the progress of the project, letting you know that um, I suppose realistically if we had another $3,000 we could get the inside done to the point where it could be opened and um, information as far as the, the um, stories behind the rocks and that sort of thing could be added in there. But um, that's about how close we are. But we really, really want the, and evidently, according to Carrie Conger, there were 30 bikers down there. I saw them. And um, Uwe and Nine, and it has been quite an attraction. There are several people that have been there and then come to the restaurant and mention what a neat thing it is. That it especially easy. the communities that are waiting to 2017 to get their rock painted. I think it was Sunday morning. Was it Sunday morning and we were unfortunately out of town? But anyway, it was very nice to get home and have that kind of message that there were a significant number of bikers, patriots, whatever, down there. Um, and so thank you for your time. Uh, if, the, um, if the stones are not used, I would guess they would be a place that they could be used in, in the park. I mean, one of my personal visions would be to try and do a rock garden or something where the fish pond once was around the bridge. Well, the if they if there's enough of them there to do your vision. Well, and I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. Yeah, I mean, whatever is. Yeah, I here's my thought. I do not want them to end up in a landfill because um, there is historical significance to them, plus they are pretty, and they would be expensive if you were to want to go and buy them. So I would hate to yeah. see them just be dispersed willy-nilly. So yeah, then probably need to go through a park board or something too. I'm just saying that that was, the one question I get most asked frequently is, when are you going to put the fish pond back in? Which and would be absolutely awesome. Larry Bird and I were talking yeah. about that. But, and um, my response is the insurance company says never. But um, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> but I mean, I think if we could do something there, so it doesn't look like the bridge. To well, nowhere. then here's my request: if they could be moved by before the Fourth of July, so they're not just sitting there in the parking area, because um, right now it, is, it doesn't yeah. look like we are getting completed. But we really have pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Is there anything else? If not, we're on to six, which is continuing business. A, Blue Space Creative. Oh, oh, sorry, man. I was thinking of something else. I really don't have anything to do to report on Blue Space. They're going to be here on July 29th. I haven't gotten any form of advance from them um, at this point. I really don't have anything additional to provide. Well, yeah, they were here. They were here. Yeah, they yeah, were here and stayed overnight. And 
visited with a lot of the community people and, and, and Sky visited with them and he said they were very positive and they and they had done a lot of research while they were here and they had a lot of questions. There was, I think, 12, excuse me for interrupting, but Denise also, um, there were 12 of them mm -hmm. because, and they sat and sort of um, went over their findings and, and things for about two hours out at the restaurant and were very optimistic about their impression of what Sac City is and what they think it could be. So I think it was great. Yeah, I, they, I visited with Scott and that's what he told me as well. So that's nice. Okay. I think that was on their own dime too. Yeah, I know. Okay, um, we'll go on then to B, Chautauqua Park Improvement Update. I have quite a bit more to share with you there. I believe we'll be starting putting the electrical in for the pillars sometime in the next week. Uh, they were working on a couple of different options and kind of a new option to provide electricity to the pillars has kind of come up so just since we've been talking with the electrician that actually will be more cost effective and, prob and not tax the already electric weak electrical system on the Chautauqua building. So that would be running the electric line from the house instead of the Chautauqua building. Um, there's already a meter there, so we don't have to worry about the meter cost of dropping it from the light, like was the alternative option we were planning in the project. So this seems like this is going to be a win-win option for us to use that as an alternative. Well, so, so excuse me, I thought you were done. Sorry. Will this give us any um, additional places to like plug in for our avenue of lights? Yes, the plan is is to put, uh, when the lights are put on top of the pillars, there would be two um, outlets on the actual pillars themselves. So there would be two outlets out there that could be used. I mean, not a whole lot more, but a little more of an option out there. Okay, thank you. Okay, then um, six, continuing business. C is urban development area update. I have nothing new to report in the urban development area. Okay. I learned we are working today, we came across maybe there might be a problem. Uh, related to some of the TIF plans that due to some law changes that we're just now starting to look into and I'm not ready to really report on that at this time. Okay. Then we will move on to seven miscellaneous. A, Brandy Ripley to address the council regarding pool admissions. Brandy? Thanks for adding to the agenda on a short notice. Um, tonight I am coming to you as a community member, not as Chamber Main Street Director, to ask you for your consideration to change the membership rules for the Aquatic Center. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's been going on in our community, and I would like to use myself and my family as an example of what is happening. On um, Friday I was contacted by Trevor, the community, or the community center, sorry, the Aquatic Center Director, about um, our family membership and his first question was are you and Sean married and I said no we're not but we've lived together for years we've lived together for three years and he asked me if all my kids in my membership were mine and I said no three are his and three are mine and then I was asked about um, my address if I lived in Sac City and I said I have a Sac City address but I do not live in Sac City and he informed me that <coughs> Res or non-residents live outside the Sac City city limits. And so I understand that. And I would be willing to go on and pay my non-resident fees for that. But then he told me that according to the rules at the Aquatic Center, um, the membership scope, I can claim on your tax return. Well, um, I've done quite a bit of research into tax laws and um, you don't have to claim your husband on your taxes. Um, you don't have to be related to people you claim on your tax return. If they live in your house and you support them, you can claim them on your tax return if they live with you for more than six months. So I, I felt this was kind of unfair because um, I support all the people that are in my household. Um, my three, I, don't, I wouldn't consider them stepkids, we're not married, but um, one of them lives with me during the summer. I feed her, I buy her birthday presents, I buy her Christmas presents. And unless anybody <clears throat> asks me, I don't consider her anything less than one of my own children. So I was kind of offended by um, being told that I would have to buy two non-resident family pool passes for my family. <clears throat> with that being said, I wanted to provide you guys with some information to see if you would 
consider maybe changing the membership rules because I learned that the last membership um, information was updated in either 2001 or 2003 when Mike Fisher was um, the manager and director of the Aquatic Center. I don't know if that information is correct, but um, what was considered a family in 2001 or 2003 is a lot different than what it's considered in 2014. Um, we all know that in the recent past, you know, Iowa has changed the laws where um, same-sex partners can get married, and um, I have a problem with the family definition that's on the pool membership that is stated husband and wife, um, and I hope that can be considered as well. So what I did is I provided you all a packet of information, and the first two copies are, um, <coughs> excuse me, memberships of two different swimming pools, and they're, they're both different. Um, there's some good definitions of what family means to them, and then I have also included a, a few sources of what the definition of family is from the internet for you guys to look at too. And then the <coughs> spreadsheet that I have in there, um, what I did with that is I actually called 20 different swimming pools located around Sac City to find out what they would consider for my family if I was to get a membership. And all 20 of those swimming pools said that I qualify as a family membership for them. And I understand our rules are different, but I just wanted to give you guys information that 20 other pools around us are recognizing um, differences in families that it's not always husband and wife and um, birth children. It can be foster kids. It can be step kids. Um, just uh, a lot of different variations there. Um, but I noticed that when I went to the aquatic center and I asked for the rules and regulations, <coughs> they were unable to give me the rules and regulations for the aquatic center and they handed me a season pass application for 2013, <coughs> which is pretty vague. So what I did was I took the time to draft you all a new membership form for the Saxony Aquatic Center. It is not um, by any means correct. Um, those are not your rates that are on that form that I drafted up. Um, I added a spot that said an additional fee would be added for non-resident memberships on there. Um, I added membership definitions um, defined for what a family could mean. I'm not saying that's a good definition to go by, but a lot of swimming pools that I researched use um, two adults and X number of kids for their family <coughs> memberships. Um, that would indicate whether it's husband or wife or, or what that is. And then um, to offset the cost of large families, they usually put a like four kids stipulation on there. <coughs> and then what they do with that is if you have more than four kids, they add X amount of dollars for that extra kid. Usually five dollars is what they use. Um, and then a lot of places um, you can pay for a caregiver to be on your membership, which is an extra amount of money. And <clears throat> another reason I drafted this, I didn't make this so it work out for families. I'm trying to help you guys look at some new ideas that will keep the most amount of people in the community happy while um, continuing um, getting income for our community, for our aquatic center as well. Um, I know our aquatic center doesn't make money, but I understand after talking to a few people that, you know, we go in the we go in the hole with our aquatic center every year, but the tax dollars from our residents is what keeps that going. So um, the more members we have, you know, the better we can keep our aquatic center. So I'm, I'm concerned that with all these surrounding communities around us, if we don't keep our community mem members happy, they're going to be driving to Storm Lake or Lake City when they get their new pool, or there's just a lot of other communities they can go to. <laughs> Um, also, on the last page of the form that I put together, since I learned that um, memberships are going to have to be taken care of here at the city office from now on, um, I put a city use only section on there to, to help whoever would have um, someone come in for a membership. And they could prove their, um, where their residency is, and it gave some options of what they could bring in, and then how they proved that the children live in their household and some options, because if people are coming in here and they are truly getting a membership for their family, they're not going to have a problem with giving you guys that information. Utility bill, 
birth certificate for their kids. And it's not that, not that complicated. And then a place on there where um, you can show your residences, whether they are not in the city limits, but that would be up to the city, and then you could add that extra B, and then people see the official on there. I'd like to thank you because a lot of people complain complaining that they don't have any suggestions. And you've obviously done a lot of work. I've done a lot of research yes, on you this. Yes, have. And I thank you very I much. try to help you out. And I have heard from a lot of people over the weekend. And um, I'm upset we have some community members that are really, really taking advantage of the situation. And I think this would help eliminate that and keep you know, a majority of the population and the community happy. But I've also let them know when I've heard that they've been mad at Trevor to let them know that he's just doing his job. And he can only do what you guys tell him to do. So there's a good option to help keep him happy too. Well, thank you. Thank you very I want to thank you too, Brandon. Thanks for what Barb said. Thanks. <coughs> so how do you want to move forward on this? Well, um, you have the information that Brandy has presented to you now. Um, of course, I haven't had an opportunity to review some of this, of course, but uh, uh, you will say there was something on your table tonight that kind of goes over some different options and scenarios. There's a couple of factors that need to be taken into consideration as we do this. Uh, one is, is that we are in the middle of the season, so anything that we do, we'll have to look this course as what its situation is about application for this year or for next year and how you want to move or proceed on that. That's one question you'll have to answer. You, you'll have to ask yourself. A second one is, is any scenario, I, I'm of the opinion that any option we choose is going to have flaws. It's not going to make everybody happy. So uh, the question I think you need to ask yourself is, is, is the system that you're considering, can it be implemented, what it takes to implement that system? And secondly, what is the, can that system be enforced? That would be the next question. I think that any system that you would consider possibly changing to, those are the questions you're going to have to ask yourself before making a decision. Um, I, I know many of these alternatives are, you're just now getting to see them in the last day or so. Um, the first option that you see within the pool options is the current system. And you can see it's, a, and I won't go into the details. You have it before you, you have an opportunity uh, to take it home and read it for yourself. But it basically explains what the current system in place for. This system was put in place back in the 2001 2002 time period uh, because the pool manager at the time came to us and was concerned, had a serious problem. He had no method to determine who could qualify as part of a season pass and who could not. And so the question to the council at the time is please give me some direction on how to make a determination on how we include and who we don't include. And at the time the decision was is that the IRS system, or and of course it's not just the IRS that uses it, but the IRS system that, put in, that was put into place has been vetted and it's also verifiable. It's something that individuals can prove whether or not they meet a status or not. Uh, there's different types of documentation that you can have for those purposes. So if you were challenged, you could provide that type of information. Um, uh, I, unless you have any further questions, there's later on in the analysis, you'll have a, there's been some rumors going around, of course, that aren't correct. One has been about what the status of gay couples would be. Of course, gay couples can file joint taxes, so that wouldn't be an issue either. They'd be able to prove that they have a legal um, relationship recognized by the government. Uh, the next one is that uh, there was questions about whether or not someone without a season pass could be on the swim team. There's no correlation or link between the swim team and season passes. Um, uh, then I guess some of the other things I would point out is that um, the policy that was the question is is how many issues do we have? How many applicant applications do we have that are issues? Um, we have about um, we and I won't go into exact numbers, but looking over some averages of scenarios we've seen in past years, we usually have about 20 percent of the applications that are incorrectly filled out. Half of those incorrectly filled out are typically the resident, non-resident issue, where they are filing, typically it's not the wrong way, it's typically that they're filing as a resident when they should be filing as a non-resident. 
Um, and then the other half is more of a combination of several different issues, and I'll probably just read those because you'll see how they all correlate to one another. Um, of all the applications, uh, uh, are incorrect for inclusion of babysitters, adult children, grandchildren of multiple children, cousins, adult brothers and sisters and their families, and families under one roof without an IRS status. Um, so that would make up about half of the issues that we see, which would usually be about 80 a year, uh, fall into that category. Um, and then we have about 8 to 10 that actually fall into the resident, non-resident status. I've also, at the end of your packet, the very last page of your packet is a copy of the application that's currently used by the pool. This application has been in use other than <coughs> dates on it for some time. You will notice that the application states on it that individuals living within Sac City City limits is what would be the identifying marker for resident, non-resident status. You will also see that right before you put the other identified parties for a family pass on here, that it states families is considered to be a husband and wife who file a joint tax return or could file a joint tax return, and dependent children who in the past school year were a senior in high school or younger. Um, is, so, and there is, and of course, under the IRS system, you can prove all of those facts through either a tax record or a court decree or um, a signed letter, letter of spouses. Adam, can I add one thing? Sure. Um, one flaw with the tax laws that there are, um, for instance, my son, uh, my my son's dad has the right to claim him every other year in his tax return. Therefore, therefore, going by your pool membership rules, every other year he's not claimed on my tax return, then I wouldn't be able to add him to my family. Do tax. you have a court order that shows that that is the arrangement between you and your husband? I do. But then, that's you, then he would be eligible because he could be, whether you're, eight, whether you're taking him or not, he could be claimed. That's and why I court added court. Um, options on the back of that form that there could be other options besides just the taxes. Sure. I think she's done a lot of work, and I think we should take a look at some of the options that she's presented to us. Because um, if other pools are looking at other options and they're able to keep running, I think we need to modernize our thoughts. Well, I, I am a little. I, mean, I am. I am a little curious, though. Who did you talk to at Glidden and Carol? Because I talked to both of them today. And when I explained the scenario, they both gave me very different stories. I talked to the city clerk in Glidden, and she told me that they use the IRS system to make their determinations. And when I talked to the manager of the pool at Carroll, they told me that, um, that non-married status living in a house together would not qualify there as well. I actually took Carol's read off of their city of Carroll website. Okay. I didn't talk to anybody. And Glidden, I talked to Hannah. And she said families considered immediate family 20 years and younger living under the same roof. Sure. So there seems to be some disparity on what but type of information you get. Depending on who you talk to, I suppose yeah. you could have different answers. But um, sure. the fact that I contacted 20 and majority of them. Probably the most prevailing system that we've seen in the region has been the uh, numeric, uh, and what you'll see is mentioned as being the numerical system, which is the pool options that you see within the report would be option number two and three. Those seem to be the most prevailing options that you see used within the area. Uh, uh, so how did this come about? Why this year? Why not previous years? What did we do that all of a sudden is bringing this up and we're catching all this stuff? Well, probably what mostly it has to do is up until a couple of years ago, this was strongly being enforced by the pool management. And then over the last couple of years, we're going to transition from manager to manager. Um, the enforcement of it has somewhat lagged. We did an analysis at the end of last year based on some concerns that we had brought to us. And when we looked at it, we discovered that there must be a problem um, with applications being incorrectly filed. So we knew that this year, when we started getting applications at the beginning of the season, we needed to be more mindful of enforcing the existing policy. And if one thing that they found more than anything yeah. was so I'm probably the best thing that needs to be changed is the applications need to come from City Hall. Yeah. Because when you're putting young children in, in responsibility of determining those things or making sure that they're filled out correctly, it probably was not a good idea. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what you have as kids enforcing it when they were doing the applications. And, and in fact, from probably about half the cities that I've seen over the last week or so, 
about half of them have some kind of reference to the fact that you can only do season passes at the city office. So if we learned one thing, that's probably something that needs to yeah. change. Well, I truly think we need to change our, our form. I think times have changed since 2001 when it was implemented. You don't have the common families anymore. I mean, you have yours, mine, ours, theirs, all under one roof. I don't feel that a grandmother should be buying one pass for all of her grandkids. No, I think that is an issue. But I truly think we need to look at our thing and our policy and change it. It needs to be made more modern, like Barb said earlier. And, and I think, you know, what was just brought up by Sandy, you know, certain things going through the city office so that the enforcement, you know, even of, uh, you know, address people living outside the city limits and, you know, just you know, I agree with the city yeah. limit thing. I don't yeah. have an issue with that, but I have an issue with the other part of it. The other thing you might consider doing is when they have the sign up for everything day at the rec center, yeah. you can include the pool sign up because mm -hmm. there's adults there managing that. You could include the pool pass sign up with the sign up for everything else in the summer at the rec mm -hmm. center. So they would have, they could also come to the city, but they would have another option. If they were going there to sign up for everything else, it would be convenient for people to sign up for their city, their pool pass at the same time. When, well, when they're doing that at that sign up, uh -huh. who's uh, administering that? In other words, what it needs to have is you know oversight, right. verifying the you know resident addresses and so on. Is that who? who I don't, I don't know the mechanics. The rec the center director, did he oversee the sign-ups for the kids this year? I mean, they don't just let them walk in and... It was at the elementary school. I think a person from each, like what? if they had summer rec, that person was there. If they had... I think it was more of a cafeteria plan where they went... They went to wherever they were going. To the different stations. So we have to have a representative from the city there to do it. Right. Gotcha. Another problem we've I'm discovered uh, that is probably more prevalent than, than any of us probably would realize is, is right, up till now, the punch passes are, have always been as a courtesy held at the pool for the customers. And during this whole discussion in the last week, one of the things we probably also scratched the surface on is that we've had an issue with people um, using punch passes without the permission of the owner of the punch pass. And so one of the things that we're going to be looking at doing is we're no longer going to provide the courtesy of holding on to punch passes at the pool. Um, there's no way for the staff to enforce who has permission and who doesn't have permission to use a punch pass. So um, that's something else that we're likely going to be changing as well. Well, right now we're looking, it's June 10th. I, 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 hate, I hate the feeling that um, 70% of the passes have already been purchased for the year. They have, unfortunately, they happen all right, well, obviously, they all happen right yeah. at the beginning of the year. I hate the feeling that you get the phone call, you have 10 minutes to make a decision on this, but if we were to change it, I think it would have to be tonight for this year, or or let it sit and say, okay, work at it, you know, something for next year. I mean, at the... We have another council meeting in what? two weeks, and they still have the whole month of July. Well, then, then we're one third actually through the summer. Then we're kind of a third of the way through the summer. I mean, um, and I think when is the pool closed? August what? The seventeenth. In August. Like so, really, six weeks. Six to seven weeks. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. When you have kids, two weeks is forever. I mean, I can't go to the swimming pool while you wait yeah. for decisions. You know, not trying to make you guys make a decision, but um, we were we were advised that until we paid the difference that we were no longer allowed to come to the swimming pool. So I don't agree with that. I think that's totally wrong. I have an issue with that. I guess so. I think we need to make some kind of a decision tonight because that's not fair to her or her kids just because her and Sean are not married. But they all legitimately live in the same room. Steve. I'd just like to voice my opinion, Steve Gary here, and I'm not taking any sides, but if we see this many mistakes on the application and these people have had a season pass in the past, 
we about have got to let it go this year and let them in. And I guess what gets me out of this whole situation is it wasn't until two weeks ago you guys finally decided when to hire the lifeguards. And this should have been something that we did way back in January, February. We and if this goes back to 2001, I think, wow. We started, we started taking applications for lifeguards in January, Steve. We didn't have enough to open the pool for that. Well, yeah, you know, that's a concern. We talked about that here today, you know. When we were going swimming in that lot, it took two. It took two lifeguards. Now what's it take? Six to open up? Well, we right. barely have what, seven? Yeah, we have nine right now, but we just gained four recently. So you can thank Lake City for not opening their pool this right. year. Yeah. Oh, they came. Okay. Yeah, I did hear that. But you know, I would think you would want any kind of admission that you could get. You know, until you get this situation. So what if away. we just stand the way we stand right now for this year? Are you and saying then make them buy two tickets or No, I'm yeah. saying it's our screw up. It's been already started the Passes have already been passed out. What you're saying is keep it the way it's been. Keep the last it the few way it's been the last few years this season. year, and then we need to start immediately working on coming up with a new system for next year. I agree with that. Because it's not fair. Like I agree with what you said, Steve. And I totally too. agree with Very that. Good. It's not their fault. No. It's not no. whoever else's fault. Now, no. if I'm we not have blaming a, anybody, it, it's just something that that came up. You know, we all know. You know, we're, we're yeah. all in a situation where we've seen the family entity change. Right. And if we have a grandmother that has bought passes, which is rumor, right. I've heard, total rumor, we have a grandmother that has bought one pass and expects all of her grandkids on it, we need to put the kiboshes to that because they're not probably under the same roof. But if it's people like those guys or, I'm um, just, I keep pointing you, sorry. It's you just, know, you're here. I didn't give them the other examples. I know of a man and woman that are out there that have a baby, they're engaged to be married in September and they're expected to get two pool passes. And it's families like that that yeah. I have a problem yeah. with, but um, I'm willing to help, you know, help you guys create a new membership form or whatever I can do to help, you know. I want it to benefit everybody, not just the community members. Mm -hmm. you, you do have two difficult issues here. One is, is we have a policy in place, so we, so we need to do something about the exit. My job, Sandy's job, is to enforce the policy. So we need to do something about the policy in place at the very minimum. The, the second issue is is that we have people that have been contacted that have now complied with the policy. So now we have a handful of people that were that application were incorrect that have now come in and bought additional passes. What or, what or part of theirs was incorrect? Was it the city part of it? Were there non residents or was both. it we've seen both. We've had both. Fixed How many of them would have been the same people living under the same roof? Because those are the ones that I think we're discussing mm -hmm. that there's a feeling that we should think about that seriously. Um, the resident thing probably won't change. So if it's three or four people that are falling under the all the people under the same roof, maybe they could be contacted. If it's a whole bunch, then probably you have to think about how we're going to go forward. There's but I think we ought to take whatever the council members are feeling they want to do and work with that. What if we were to create a household pass that would allow them to uh, do five people of their choice on a pass for the same price as a family membership for the family season pass, and for this year, say they could do the season pass as it is, or they could do a household pass that was five. You know, cause I don't, I mean, when we talk about living under the same roof, I mean, how are we going to enforce that? I mean, well, he, he was there, is it one night a week, does that count? Two nights a week, does that count? I don't, I noticed on Brandy's um, one form, so about, uh, two adults, no more than two adults romantically involved. I don't want to become the sex police finding out what the nature, nature of your relationship is. I mean, if you're, I don't care if it's platonic or not, I guess socially, I don't want, I don't think as a city council we should be doing that. But if we were to say that you could do a household pass that was five people, no more than two adults, and I, you could. And for each additional person you could, she suggested like a five dollar charge for each. I think I think person. maybe maybe if you want twenty dollars or something additional, even I mean, it, 
but we want to be limited for that because thanks for um, but I think if, if you if you're doing something like that and just do totally unlimited then you're going to get the you could potentially get the entire city of Sac City on one household right. task I mean um, but I mean I think kind of stay under the same roof is something that's difficult to monitor um, I think it's difficult to monitor what the nature of a relationship is. Um, well, they're foster kids. I mean, if a grandmother wanted to buy a household pass and say it's for five grandkids that live in five different households, okay, it's sort of like we're giving them a, a bulk deal on five individual passes. I, I hate to, you know, go against you there, Bruce, but I think that that's not in the best interest of the city because um, if you have a grandma buying five different passes, say three different households, then how much money is the city losing? On, on those um, memberships that are maybe one hundred eighty. Well, if a grandma home. wants to buy it for each different household, that would be totally fine. Mm -hmm. I would say. Right. No, I, I, and that's but fine. not I guess. one pass, and all the households included under that one pass. No. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, if we if we do anything, I think if we could come up with one that is a X number of people, if it, it would it would suit. Most of, it would suit most of the needs that would kind of match. It would, it would do something to reach out, and yet it um, would be something that would be enforceable. Because I, I mean, a lot of these I look at them. How do you enforce if they're living together? How do you enforce you know, what? What is a family unit? Um, I don't know. Chloe, you know, can I just say, Chloe Wallace? Um, I worked for the pool for four years, maybe I don't know, and even then. I know the issue did not get enforced. So what I don't understand is right now why we're making a big deal with two months to go. I mean, I'm sure you have the names of the people that did already change that came forward and said, all right, we do have to buy another pass. So I'm asking right now, well, maybe just keep it the same, like it hasn't been enforced for how many years so far, and at some point before next year, make a certain agenda of what you're going to do. You know, with regard to the enforcement issues, you know, it has not, you know, as we've talked about, hasn't been enforced. You know, you could look at it as one of two ways. Well, it hasn't been enforced, therefore let's continue the non-enforcement, non-payment, call it bargain deal because of lack of people doing their job. Or we could look at it from the standpoint of those people that have taken advantage of it in the past years really got a really bargain deal, you know, because it wasn't enforced and they took advantage of a situation of lack of enforcement. You know, that begs the question of, okay, when do you start saying, okay, well, here are the rules here. Uh, we start enforcing it now. And I always think whenever you do a knee-jerk reaction to something, you're going to come up with a situation of, okay, how do we enforce it? How do we not pay, you know, play favorites? How do we not hurt somebody? Like when I hear this, you know, five member, you know, to a family, you've got people with, you know, let's say seven or eight people legitimately that meet the definition. Now we're going to put be calling, you know, put, putting them in a situation where they're going to be having to, you know, come up with extra dollars to pay for you know, uh, an already large family, so. I think I think the only way we could possibly do anything this summer would be to continue the family pass as it is outlined in the application and add an alternative. I mean, so if, if they meet the IRS definition of a family, great. If they have 22 kids, well, I guess if I wouldn't have 22 kids under age 18. Just keep in mind that everybody out there hasn't been taking advantage of the situation. Um, right. just, just for the example that I moved here three years ago and I was under the understanding of how I filled out my family pass that I qualified because that's who I considered my family under one roof. So I wasn't taking advantage of the situation. Um, the pool membership form just doesn't have enough definition in there so people truly understand what mm -hmm. was meant. The problem and, and was by, Go ahead. No, go ahead. And, and, and by my comments, I didn't say that there was necessarily intent, you know, to not 
be honest, and it was just a situation where you could have inadvertently done so, and it's really just come to your attention because it's finally being, you know, so, you know, don't misconstrue that, you know. But the problem really we have right now with this form is it says husband and wife. So if we keep it the same, like you said, Bill, right. that's not going to cut the mustard for her or the other couple that's engaged to be married or Joe Blow and Sally Mae down the street who are living under the same roof and have a kid together but aren't married. And if they so wanted they'll all get to penalized. tackle that in a court of law, they could. They could. You bet they could. And so I, I, this is the problem with it right there. Right. And, and one of the changes is who filed a joint return? Okay, well, some people are going to like not to file a joint return, but they could. I mean, you, know, you could fix that by adding the word eligible. Or could or eligible, yeah. Married and couples who are eligible to file a joint return would certainly be clearer. Why does it have to be married couples? Well, I guess... Sorry, I'm just I, 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 playing I, I, the I, devil's I, advocate. I, I, I frankly don't care. I well, mean, I mean, I mean, how I, many people nowadays choose to live together and don't want to get married? Right. I, I, mean, say, I frankly don't care if they're married or not. But I mean, that's, that's what this says. Right. And that's I, what you just said again. What I'm saying, Teresa, is that as it sits now, that's one definition. I mean, that's the definition that was there that unfortunately none of us ask about when we approve pool rates. Um, I kicked myself for not saying, so what is a family anyway, you know, when we were approving the rates? Um, there is, I believe the IRS method though is court tested because I mean there are benefits that come to couples who are married that are not available to those of us who aren't. And as one who isn't married and files, pays single income taxes, yeah, it, it hurts, I'll be honest. Um, but is it necessarily fair? No. That was why I was suggesting. No. That was why I was suggesting some kind of a household pass that would be in addition to the family pass. So if a family met this and had more kids, that would be fine. If they didn't meet this and were op wanted to do another option for this year, they could. That way we don't put the staff in the in the awkward position of saying, we know this is what the rule is, but we're not going to enforce it. Because, frankly, that's part of their job is to do to do the enforcement. I mean, that, that that's why they get paid the big bucks. I mean, that, you know, to, um, to, uh, to do what is our will, and we're the ones, we're the only ones who can change it. They can. Right. How, how can we, any suggestions on how we can define a household pass? Uh, and and I'm, I'm, not, I'm asking that perhaps as a solution for that. I guess my suggestion would be, in, in terms of you know, what makes a household and what is, what's enforceable, I mean, short of saying, do you get your mail at the same address? I mean, some of those kind of proof. I mean, that would be possible, but there's some other issues. So if my kids live primarily with an ex-spouse, they may not totally live with me, but they might be part of my household. Yes, and there's a lot of single moms that are a household without a husband. So if exactly. you look at that, and I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. that just really... Um, There's single men who have their children. Can I let you know one thing about the research I did? Um, some swimming pools consider it a one-parent household, and then they give a rate for a one-parent family, so to speak. And then some give, you know, a little higher rate for a two-parent household, or what they really prefer to call that. From a lot of my research, is two adults, um, rather than saying family. husband and wife or married. They just say two adults. Um, and that's why I gave options of proof of residency because if you are two adults living under one roof, it's very easy to prove where you live. Right. Yeah, and but the the options that you have there for you know for the children, yeah, it's, it's easy to prove where the two people live. Um, but if you have foster children living with you, 
Um, they probably wouldn't necessarily come into birth certificate, divorce decree, adoption decree, custody decree. I mean, they don't fit any of those. I mean, there, there are a lot of gray areas. Couldn't you do two adults and four, four children? children, and then anyone's after that you pay an extra fee for? That's how small my set up. Two adults, four two, children, yeah. and extra children are $5 each, and that is just the fee. The only ones that seem larger than that are huge aquatic centers that are usually attached to, you know, in a really big town. They might get $35, $40 for them, but you're also talking about usually gym memberships with it, too, and more things than just a 90-day season pool. Well, like. twenty a five dollar addition is basically a one a one the cost of a one day pass in the pool is four dollars for a for for an individual pass I think for a child, yeah. for a child. You know, the only problem I have with that is is then then you penalize the the family that has a larger number of children with expect you know six it, kids like we do and we spend it, more yeah, money in the community I, because we have a larger family. So. Well, I don't. So you know, we, I don't. I, I don't want to see necessarily a limit put on the number of children in a, in a extra cost. You know, only if it's a source of abuse, and that's not abuse. That's my, you know, so my only. The only reason I would say a number bill is because I don't want us to be in the enforcement business. I mean, I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, one thing that it, that concerns me quite a bit about under one roof, if we use any type of language including under one roof and that was marked on earlier. I haven't heard anything so far that would give us the enforceability of determining how long constitutes under one roof to justify a family pet, you know. Uh, Could be my neighbor. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, of course this is an extreme circumstance. I spend the night at Tom's house tomorrow night and we qualify as under one roof. It's got to be enforceable at some level for us to determine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of that would be living under your roof would be able to prove, I mean, to give you proof that they live there if they're only there for one night. Hey, but that's where my point lies is, is where's the enforceability? Because um, I can tell you that in the few cases of the non-tax related entity, we have one I'm aware of that has been together a very short time period, and we have a couple that have been together quite a long time period. So. You know, they're, I, do I know all of them? No, but I know of a couple of examples of ones that have very short time periods together and others that have long term time periods. It might be rather vague, but we could have continuously living under one room. <coughs> For X amount of days, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you can I mean, I guess. I, I is there anyone that wants to make a recommendation at this point in time? Because we're going round and round and round in circles. And well, we need to figure something out because this. otherwise Brandy's kids can't go to the pool without her buying another two memberships. Well, that's why I'm asking. Is there so anybody got has a, a recommendation? We, we don't necessarily, you know, just for one isolated case to do a knee-jerk reaction. There's nothing wrong with, you know, and I apologize for wanting to move slowly but the reality of it is, is you have to have something that's definable and enforceable and just to accommodate one particular situation, I don't think... I'm not saying make a decision and a change today, but we've got to figure out a way that's fair. Frankly, she probably can't afford, sorry, to purchase two more memberships mm -hmm. for her kids. And is it fair that they get penalized because we can't make a decision that compromises for the rest of the season? I mean, we've got, what, a month and a half left of the pool being open? Can I mention what the situation was going to be? Um, the last time I talked to Trevor to find out what would be right, and he told me I would need to pay for two non-resident family pass as well. In reality, just because you have eight people on your pool membership doesn't mean all eight people are coming. I have two 17-year-olds that work that hardly ever go to the pool. Um, me and Sean hardly ever go to the pool. It's four kids I'm really talking about. And according to Trevor's definition of what we have to do, my three kids could go to the pool, and then I'm going to have one little girl sitting at home because I can't afford to get a pool membership, and that's what would happen. Well, I know from an economical standpoint, probably anything we do, whether it's numerical or any changes we make, I know one decision Brandy and I make every year is we buy punch passes. We don't buy family passes because um, since Brandy and I don't go on a regular basis and we want the opportunity for a babysitter to go on our behalf, we buy punch passes. 
so that anyone that we want to allow to use our pass uh, can fall under that classification because there is no distinguishing on punch passes. There has not been any distinguishing on punch passes. It's easy to have a smaller family. Curtis? Sure. It's not as expensive. Curtis, please. Are you, uh, is there a proposal in your packet for prorating punch passes? There is. It is option number six. Do you have the data for how often someone may use a, a family pass so that you could kind of find out how many punch passes would be used or how many punches would be used by someone in a typical season? Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. One of the discussions we had Monday, I think, like Monday morning it was, is we were trying to vet through some of these options is we figured it up and if you, the most negatively impacted individuals by a punch pass system are those who use the pool every day. Because we figured it up and right now if you have a family of three that uses the pool pretty much every day, they're paying about 60 cents a day to use the pool. And of course, even if you heavily discounted the punches, um, we were looking in the neighborhood of a dollar or two a punch, which is still twice what somebody would be paying that is a regular user of the pool. So if you go with a punch system, why it takes any any issues of, as far as family relation goes out of the issue, um, the cost per punch is probably going to be a little bit higher than what most people are normally used to paying. How many memberships will come in yet this year? Probably another 15, At 10 or 15. Yeah. So many have we gotten so far? Seventy. Well, we got another five today. Another five today, so seventy-five. And probably another fifteen. Roughly, Ten to so 15. roughly ninety total. Mm -hmm. So if a family, f I'm sorry. Go ahead. We were using roughly 75 days of operation as a 75 right. days. And, you know, just just to, uh, for your number purposes. You know, just to bring up maybe a little background. It was to everybody's understanding that this has always been enforced that way because that's why it was implemented back when it was implemented. We had no idea until last year when Trevor, bless his heart, went to a lot of work to establish a much nicer form that was made from another form, but he, he's done a lot of work internally too, and he brought those in and we saw a lot of discrepancies. And of course the year was over with. So we sat and visited, and it's like this is something that, you know, we need to make sure that the kids, and unfortunately that was where part of the problem was, do a much more better job of explaining to people when they come in so they knew what they were doing. So he had a training course before the year ever started, went through the whole explanation, telling them this is what you need to tell people when they come in. Well, we found after just the first week, because it, it was only one week that had gone by, that it was not working, that it was just too difficult for 15-year-old kids and 16-year-olds to make that determination, and it was unfair, you know, to them. And so that's kind of where this all, unfortunately, developed from. And Chloe, was there a sheet made or posted? that someone else could read by because I mean when you are having high schoolers working there I mean they're always going to hear different stuff so I mean I would feel comfortable if there was like a sheet made out so when I come and sign up for that pass I can read it and say okay this it's is where right I fall on the application. It's, on the it's right on, it's on the application yes, that it someone is. can read. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah definitely. But uh, are there 13 year olds coming to sign people up for passes or are there not to my knowledge, I mean, you can tell their adult writings on all the yeah. applications. So I don't, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily been an issue, you know, to our okay. knowledge. And, and like you said, we have definitely discovered that that is something we need to change, no matter what we do or, or what we go forward with, that, um, you know, that's expecting a lot for yeah. expecting kids at that age mm -hmm. to make that determination, no matter what determination? And I if totally agree that, with you know, that. I, I mean, you know, we all sitting thing. there might see an address written down that says Sierra Avenue and know immediately Those kids, exactly. Sierra Avenue is out 280th Street. Well, they put resident 
Yeah. They just believed what they marked. Yeah. And that's what they charged them. So I, you know, I'm not going to blame mm -hmm. those kids. It's just an no. unfortunate thing, and it was found, and it's just trying to be correct. I think what you did moving it to having people apply for memberships here in city office is the best move you can. Because mm -hmm. in a good idea. my research, most communities are doing that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm going to guess this has a lot to do with this situation similar to this occurring, that it's not being well managed at the pool itself. It doesn't do anything to change the fact of the questions that we have arising this evening. Exactly. I guess I would move that we establish a household season pass that will cover up to five people, up to six people, no more than two of whom are adults. Five or six? Up to six, six people, no so more than two adults. And no more children? than two of whom, whom are adults over age 18. The names? Of those included on the pass must be submitted at the time of the purchase and cannot be changed. The cost of the household season pass will be $135 for residents, $180 for non-residents, which will be the same as a family pass. And those who have purchased a family pass to this point may exchange it for a household pass by June 20th. And for this year, they will have the option to use a family pass or a household pass, which kind of punts it down. I mean, I, I don't think it's a permanent situation, but it maybe gets something. It gets us through the year. It meets the it meets the needs of some people, and it. What are you going to do about so the families that have six kids? I, I, or I, four, I, they mean five children. That what do we do about the extra children? I, I, I would say. Five bucks a child more. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, five I mean, bucks a child I guess, more. I guess what I'm saying, if they are traditional, I mean, we can do. Um, is this an add on to the existing policy or is this a. a amendment to the. Amendment to it. Because in his scenario, if you keep the existing policy in place, as far as the other alternative being the tax on the system, those people that could fall under the taxing scenario would be impacted, even if they had more than okay. four kids. That's what I'm saying. You're still going to have a hole for, for, for people who haven't got the season pass yet to have more than four kids. I mean, but I guess the point I would make is no system's going to be perfect. If there's one thing we've learned in doing all of this, no system is going to make everybody happy, and no system is going to be is going to be perfect unless we just give the pull away free. Uh, that, that's the only system that's going to make everybody happy. Except other than the except the, except except the, the city. city and the budget <laughs> with which we have to operate. What can we live with till the end of this pool year in I, order to really look at it for the next so season? What if we do add what he said with this one for the rest of this year? Is that feasible, possible? It's possible. I, I, it's hard for me to sit here and say exactly what problems that's going to present, but it, we can definitely implement it. I would increase the we number. We have some we would have to go back to. It depends. There again, it depends. Okay, I'm going to throw out your example. We did have an example where it was a grandmother and six grandkids. Well, if she comes in and tells us that is her household, she now has come and but paid she, for three different passes. So what are we going to do with that? So I would Our, assume we will have to go back and tell her. She paid for three different passes. What do you mean? She, she paid the $135 for each household. Yes. Yes. Correct. But for she was told she couldn't have it three different passes. Well, but, that's right, she, and that's, oh, but that's the way it should be. And, and, and but the, then if she would come in though and tell us it's all under her or that the, her grandkids live with her part time. Can she prove that? I, the, okay, so then how are we So we need to put it? a stipulation did, in. Did yours include said. living with them versus? Mine, mine did, did not. Mine did not. Bruce, Bruce didn't include it. So she could come in and say if there's only six so grandkids, she could say. I guess, and the reason I. All, one, all of them would fall under one. The act. reason I didn't say that was to try to get with something that we could actually implement and enforce this year. What, what I think it should be is at least a definable residential address within the city with those individuals living at that residence at least 50% of the time. Uh, you know, this occasional showing up for a weekend or whatever. Yeah, would a reasonable person say that is a full-time 
person living there? Of course not. You made you know, a clarification. Right. I, I don't yeah, know. I mean, well, I guess if you had it. Yes. They're still talking, and we don't. <laughs> we'll either. If, if, I, if I had children and they came and visited every weekend, I might want to get a season pass for them, but they wouldn't live there 50% of the time. I would get a bunch of that situation, but. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, but, I, mean I, I, don't, I guess I'm just saying that if they, I mean, just for ease, I might say, here's a family pass, you know. Everybody's going to so, have a different opinion. We just got to find uh, something we can live with. I just here. thought out there to give us a start. Uh, how about cleaning up your motion with something more definable, at least 50% of the time, mm -hmm. and a definable residence within the confines of city, the city of Sag City? And I would even add a, perhaps something to your you know, uh, uh, motion upon further review for the next year's uh, implementation of the policies of, of well, you know, I'd say just for this, this season, just then for you this don't season. have to tag that on right. for the season of okay. I mean, I had I was I, I, I tend to be a, a writer more than a talker. You've had this up, all right? So, what is it? Is that 50% um, of the time? Is that 50% of the summer since that's the only time the aquatic center is open? Just because um, one of those kids that I'm talking about lives with me all summer, and the others come and visit. So now I would like to know, am I going to need to buy more I mean, you've got, like, you've yeah. got legit questions. It's, yeah. it's yeah. going to come up. Something like that is going to come up. No doubt. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. I mean, it's not the traditional 2001 families anymore. I mean, so would, I would say, honestly, I would say 50% of the summer, because yes. that's what we're charging for. Yes. Exactly. And I'm not, not for sure in the long run we don't need to look at just going all just strictly single passes Steve, to eliminate that's the best thing. The, the, the yes, I know. Reduce Steve, the cost of the single pass and just have it done that. That, that could be an option that we should look at for next year too, but to get us through the summer, yeah. I think that's option number uh, five. Steve? Single pass. Steve Gary, I got one question and all of this have all of this that we're talking about. Isn't our goal to increase revenue at the aquatic center? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we enforce the aquatic center attendance by something other than writing it down on a wet piece of paper? We will be next year. That is part of the change that's going to come to. You know, We're going to actually that, that, that's why I'm pass. saying is if you have a pass and things Absolutely. like this, isn't your goal to increase your revenue? Because you wouldn't know. Some people just no, say right, some right, right, right. Whereas you can actually give them a barcode where I was at all weekend, I got scanned in every every wing that I went to. Right. Oh, absolutely. And that's something. And then you would have statistics to look at and everything like this. I think your goal has to be is set something. Okay, a family passes five people, seven people, whatever. This is who could use it. The adults hardly ever use it. Right. Look at revenue instead of bickering about how many people are on the family plan or whatever. Have your residents stipulation like you do because I think that's very fair and everybody understands that. Actually, I don't think another, you have any yeah. worry about the, the issues of blending or... You know, somebody's willing to pay $135, I'd take their $135. But this, yeah, with as many pools in this area and... Mm -hmm. How are we changing five to six? Change five to six. And then do you pay X amount of dollars for additional? Sure, yeah, maybe, yeah. For a non-resident, that was my next question. <laughs> for <laughs> non-resident yeah. or resident? I mean per person. Both. For per each person for extra kids, kids over that number. So how much? I don't know. Five or ten. Five. Okay, so if, we, so if we're looking at 135 for six people, you might have been, that's, that's 22-something. So if you said, so so if you're adding 20 bucks a person, that just kind of prorates it. If you do 15, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. I'd say no more than 15. I would I'll too. Let you. 15 for resident, 20 for non-resident. People that are out of town are also paying more to drive into town to use. I just say, I have a flat rate for the 
Because really, if you buy we're that, going to the end of this about aquatic what? year. Yeah. Remember yeah. that. It's not written in stone. And if you divide that up by how many days or whatever is left in the season. Exactly. Right, because they all have the full season. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drew, would you read that? <laughs> okay. A household season pass this is covers. Your motion, right? Yes. I'm I would move, move that a household move. season pass covers six people, no more than two of whom are adults, 18 or over. Those names, the names of those included in the past must be submitted at the time of purchase and will be limited to those that, sorry, backing up, a household season pass covers six people, no more than two of whom are adults, 18 or over, living at one residence 50% of the summer. At one residence within the confines of the city limits of Sac City or not? No. Well, if we have resident and non-resident, would they be living yeah. Okay. The names of those included on the pass must be submitted at the time of purchase and will be limited to those individuals. Cost of the household season pass will be resident $135, non-resident $180. Additional names may be added for a $15 fee. Those who have purchased 2014 family passes may exchange them for a household pass by June 20th for the 2014 season, patrons will have the option of purchasing a family pass as outlined in the current application or the household pass as outlined above. One little question, just a clarification, the $15 fee. For the $15 fee, do they have to be children? Do they have to be relatives? Is, well, it's can you add anybody on for it's an extra on their household. They have to be in the household. Okay. okay. Additional and so we're not going to allow babysitters, we're not going to allow... Babies. And it said two so adults to begin with, so okay. yeah. that's Is already that defined. Per person or 15? Per person. Is that written in a way that I can read it? <laughs> oh, God only knows. Um, maybe. <laughs> Is everybody in agree with this? Do you have any questions or further discussion? That end of the table is awful quiet tonight. Mm -hmm. He took exception no out of the conversation. Win, no, no. but we need to try and make it right for the rest of this summer. And then we really, truly, I feel... I think it's going to take a lot of research. We need to do something different for next year. But hopefully that will be... We probably need a second for the most. Oh, yeah. I would second well, it. Well, is everyone... Are you okay? Are those... As read, I am. Okay, Gary. I have to abstain. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> okay it's so in that event, then. Is I, there, are you second? I will second, 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 second it. <laughs> okay. It's been seconded twice. A motion I and <laughs> second. Did you, did you do I seconded. Oh, no. I Chris is the second. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm not trying to forget you. The motion has been made and seconded <laughs> to approve. A household season pass which covers six people, no more than two of whom are adults 18 or over. Then go to the living on yeah. um, one residence, living in the residence up to 50% of the summer. The names of those included on the pass will be submitted at the time of purchase and will be limited to those individuals. Cost of household season pass will be resident 135, non resident 180. Those who have purchased 2014 family passes may exchange them for household passes by June 20th. Additional names may be added for the fee of $15 per person. Additional youth may be added. Is that what you want me to say? Sure. <laughs> well, it, line, it outlines it that they can't have two more than two adults, so I'm not certain that's necessary. Additional names may be added for the price of $15 fee per person. For, this, for the 2014 season, patrons will have the option of purchasing a family pass as outlined in the current application or household season pass as outlined above. Are you ready to vote on it? I'll call for a vote. Council Member Hansen? Abstain. McKinty? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion carried. Did you want this? Thank you. And I just have one question. Yes. Just to make sure. Do you want the pool personnel manager and the city to continue to proceed with 
enforcing other issues to make it fall under those two. For instance, the resident, non-resident. Yes. Are yes. you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's on board. I think the resident, yeah, it non says resident, non-resident. No, non but I mean. Oh, you mean the present ones. Right yeah. there in the middle of. Because you didn't solve those. everybody's problem. No. You solved There's the a lot we of solved the the You solved about alternative family of the, Right. You solved about 20% of the. Of the I truly, of I the truly feel issues. that the resident, non-resident issue should, needs to remain the way it is. Because we city people, we people do. that live in town, pay city taxes. <coughs> so that's the break that we get when we use the pool. Just want to make sure that it's okay out of proceed because city limits. We'll yeah. use this deadline of the 20th that they no have to questions. pay the difference, and then after that, until it's paid, they can't use the yeah. pool. Right. Okay. Yeah. So just want to make I sure that everybody's. Unfortunately, I hate to do that, but I and, think it's page. Yeah. And just going forward. A review of this needs to be done sometime within the next calendar year, looking at it before. Well, we one start. one thing I'd recommend, Bill, is don't throw away your um, your pool options, right? Because there was quite a bit of vetting going on on these six or seven different options thrown in here. So right. I suspect that the options that we're going to discuss, the solution is probably going to be come out of one of these on this list. Yeah. So I, that, I don't think it's an ideal alternative, but. I think it may be workable. It's workable, it's enforceable, it's something that we can do. Okay, okay. we're moving on. moving on. Seven miscellaneous D. Consideration of amending the 28E agreement with East Sac County Schools regarding the Sac Community Center. <coughs> um, it's really nothing new. Yeah. We, prob uh, we probably need to be consistent in using the term community center instead of rec center in the 28E mm -hmm. agreement. And we probably want it to begin July 1, 2014, instead of 13. Mm. <coughs> um, in, the, in the paragraph under city, it says rec center instead of uh, community center. And I'm and <coughs> we probably need community center <coughs> board instead of community board. Is that correct? Is that the, the official title of it? Yeah. The stuff at the school, I don't think we want to touch. The city stuff. motion to approve the amending of the 28E agreement with East Sac County Schools regarding the Sac Community Center, um, adding in Bruce's changes. <laughs> I like that. I'm July. <laughs> Whatever they might I'm be. Ju <laughs> yeah, that won't work. I'm July 1st, 2013 to July 1st of 2014, and changing anywhere where it says Rec Center to Community Center. And... Oh, yeah, where it says community board, it should say community center board. There's two, two spots in there on that one. So, that would be my motion. I would second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve amending your 28E agreement with ESAC County School regarding the SAC City Community Rec Center with the amendment of changing anywhere in the um, agreement where it says SAC Community Rec Center to SAC City Community Rec Center and SAC City Community Rec Center Board and changing mm -hmm. the... No, SAC Community Center. Take out the word rec. It's not a rec center. Oh. It's SAC Community Center. Okay. I honestly thought we still called it. No, it's SAC Community Center. All right. Um, back to the drawing board. Um, amending it by saying the SAC City Community Center uh, and also to say the Sac City Community Center Board and changing the date beginning July 1st, 2013 to July 1st, 2014. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brady? Yes. Brady? Yes. Motion here? Thanks. 
Okay, seven miscellaneous. C is consideration of approving for the kids LLC doing business as Sadie's Bistro and Tea with Lillian's request to use public property. Make a motion to approve for the kids LLC doing business as Sadie's, Sadie's Bistro and Tea with Lillian's request to use public property. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve for the kids LLC doing business as Sadie's Bistro and Tea with Lillian's request to use public property. Please call for a vote. Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Brody? Yes. Motion chair. Thank you. Seven miscellaneous D, consideration of approving for the kids LLC doing business cities. Easter and T with Lillian's request to close 6th Street from Main Street to the alley of Block 18 on June 14, 2014 from noon until midnight. This is the same thing we've talked about before, right? Yes. Yep. I will make a motion to approve for the kids LLC doing business at Sadie's Bistro and Tea with Lillian's request to close South 6th Street from Main Street to the alley of Block 18 on June 14th from noon until midnight. Well, we discovered, Teresa, is that there was a, you might remember, there was a, and Gary wasn't here, so he didn't hear it. There was a difference between what we had been told two weeks earlier by Denise and what was presented to us at the last council meeting for approval. Um, after reevaluating it with them, what was presented to us was correct, not the communication by Ms. Opsel. So that's what's being represented. I would second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded to approve for the kids LLC doing business at Cities Bistro and T with Lillian's request to close South 6th Street from Main Street to the alley of Block 18 on June 14, 2014, from noon until midnight. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Seven miscellaneous E, the second reading of ordinance number 2014-257 entitled an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Sac City, Iowa by amending provisions pertaining to section 136.03, the removal of snow, ice, and accumulations of the chapter 136 sidewalk regulations. And we found that the abutting property is the legal term that is used, right? Yeah, the state Supreme Court has recognized abutting as the property. So what has changed on this one, Adam? The only thing you'll see is an underlying the sentence. No notice. This is no notice. It doesn't, it's never required a notice. As practice, the first time in each season, we do provide a notice. And that's not changing. We're just clearly identifying in the language that notices are not required. Okay. Okay. I would move adoption of ordinance number 2014-257, an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Saxony, Iowa, by amending provisions pertaining to section 136.03, the removal of snow, ice, and accumulation of chapter 136 sidewalk regulations. I'll second. second it. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of ordinance number 2014-257. An ordinance amending the Code of Ordinance to City of Sac City, Iowa by amending provisions pertaining to Section 136.03, the removal of ice and snow and accumulations of Chapter 136 sidewalk regulations, and the amendment is that no notice is necessary. Would you call for a vote? Council Person Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brady? Yes. Brady? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion carried. I'd recommend waiving the third reading. I would make a motion that we waive the third reading on ordinance number 2014-257. I'll second that. Motion in, has been made and seconded to waive the third reading of ordinance number 2014-257. The ordinance amending the code of ordinance to say it's at City Iowa by many provisions pertaining to section 136.03. The removal of snow, ice, and accumulations of Chapter 136 sidewalk regulations. Call for the vote. Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, seven miscellaneous F is the second reading of ordinance number 2014-256 entitled an ordinance amending the code of ordinance of the city of Saxony Island by many provisions pertaining to water rates. If there's no discussion, I'll take a motion and a second. I'll, I'll make the motion to approve ordinance or the second reading of ordinance number 2014-256. No. Or, what's that? 
They've got a side conversation with them. They're not paying attention. Go ahead, Bill. Please. Uh, which is an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Sac City by amending provisions pertaining to water rates. Second it. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the second reading of ordinance number 2014-256, an ordinance amending the code of ordinance of the city of Sac City, Iowa by amending provisions pertaining to water rates. Would you call for a vote, Sandy? Council Person Bruni? Yes. Perry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Morgan Kelly? Thank you. Seven G. Recommending and waiving the third. Make a motion to waive the third reading of ordinance number 2014-256. Can I make a comment before we do that? <laughs> I feel that being that it involves a change in the rates and a change of uh, monetary amounts, that granted we probably haven't had any interest yet, but I think we should go ahead with the third reading to give people an opportunity that may become aware of it now and command and voice their opinion. I, I think that's probably wise when it comes to financial purposes. Okay, then we move to 7G, consideration of approving the I-196 detour agreement between the Iowa Department of Transportation and the City of Sac City. I spoke with Colin and I spoke with the DOT. Um, the um, pretty standard deal and uh, Colin didn't have anything other than some comments for me, some tracking information. Uh, he didn't have any issues. I would move adopting the agreement with adding removal of the permanent signs that they're placing. Cool. It says they're putting in permanent signs, but doesn't say they're taking them out. I assume that's probably implied. Right? Is that something that's just assumed? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think DOT would have any problem with that change. I mean, whether it's implied or not, adding it in, they know they're going to be responsible for it. By adding it in, you just make it very clear. I so how do you want it to read? So um, the whereas, where it says um, permanent signing and signpost for these source signs will be installed in the fall of 2014 and paper will be painted in the fall of 2014. Uh, signs will be removed after completion of the project. It would be right here. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the Iowa 196 detour agreement between the Iowa Department of Transportation and the City of Sac City with the addition of the statement that signs will be removed after completion of the project. Would you call for one? Council yes. McGinty. Yes. Brandy. Yes. Bruni. Yes. Perry. Yes. Seven H is a uh, consideration of accepting Brandy Ledford and Chan Chad Lankford's resignation from the Kids World Board. No. <laughs> or I say to <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I would move to accept the resignations of Brandy Ledford and Chad Langford from the Kids World Board with regret. Kurtz. I would second it. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded to accept Brandy Ledford and Chad Lankford's resignations from the Kids World Board. Did Chad turn in a written thing? Or just we had not received it. I did receive okay. notification from Tiffany, though, to proceed with it. Okay. Would you call for a vote, please? Councilperson Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brandy? Yes. Bruni? Yes. Perry? Yes. Motion here. We would like to thank them for the time that they have given the Kids World Board and served um, very well for that entity. Number eight is public input on solid waste matters. Is there any public input this evening? If not, we move to council forum. Ida Grove will be hosting the Northwest Iowa League meeting on June 19th. That is the annual meeting for the league. Um, so you, you'll be seeing, seeing some notifications in the next, uh, probably in the next week if you haven't seen them already. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, don't forget our next planning session would be June 26th, uh, and it sound and kind of this is a good time for me to probably bring this up. Probably one of the main things we'll be discussing is our procedural matters on how we vote at meetings, because um, in your council packets, 
or previously in your council information, you will see that there was a copy of a couple of different things. One, uh, or no, I'm sorry, I actually emailed you some information. One thing I emailed you, I contacted Bruce Bergman, the general counsel for the League of Cities. He had sent me some some benchmarking examples. One was Des Moines, the other one was Griswold. I went ahead and emailed that information to you because one of them was quite lengthy. Uh, so that you could take the time to look over those and kind of see what they're doing from a procedural standpoint. The other thing that he threw at me was a, um, there is a um, webinar that you can take and watch. It will cost $35 to attend the web, uh, to get at, gain access to the webinar. You know, one of the things that we could do is we could see about maybe doing the webinar uh, during the next council meeting, something like that. We could have it uh, maybe live during the next council meeting, have it loaded up, and you guys can watch it then. Or um, Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it during our... How long is we it? aren't making... I, I, we are not making any um, decisions. We could do it during our okay. our Thursday morning early meeting, and then we wouldn't I won't have be to there do this it. month, so if you do it this month, I will be there. Well, maybe what I can get is a password access, instead of doing this part of a universal group. The other thing is if I get a password access, I can give that to you and you guys can watch it on your own. That would probably be the too. best. That would be okay. the best. Mm -hmm. I'll probably proceed with that procedure then. Yeah. And then, uh, so I'll contact you tomorrow and start seeing about getting that set up so that we can use. The, uh, the other main thing I wanted to point out is in the end of your packet was a copy of just the one page that is the application for the annual conference. Uh, I point this out because, one, we need to fill these out for anybody who plans on attending to put into the claims next month. So it needs to be probably we need to know whether or not you plan on going by July 1st for those purposes. However, as far as hotel rooms go, yeah. I probably need to start knowing as soon as you know so we can start making arrangements for your hotel rooms. Because they so fill up. This meeting. <coughs> that was approved as part of the... Uh, consent agenda. So please take a look at your calendars at home, see if you're planning to attend, and let me know as soon as possible I so am. we can, okay, so we can start making arrangements for hotels. Um, just a little update, and also to say if any of you have any time ever between 10 30 or 11 30 and 12 30 or 10 30 and 11 30. We are serving meals. Um, the first day we had 20 kids. The second day we had 22. The third day we had 42. And today we had 30 some. Wow. So <clears throat> we are needing. Is he still needing volunteers? Yeah, we're, we're needing at least four people in the kitchen to get this all pulled together. And, and what time do they have to be there? Um, 1030. And yeah. every day there is a leader in the kitchen that knows what's going on that will give people a job. And when you go there, there's a couple things you have to do. You have to um, know about how we have to wash our hands and wear our gloves and that kind of stuff. And then there's that there will be no discrimination. And so they're supposed to tell you those things. And because, because we are getting money from the state, that is a requirement. Okay? And we are getting $3.41. And I just received um, the first check for $725 that they paid before we actually serve the meals and then we'll turn in our count and they will reimburse us for any additional. And we have, we have very generous people in our community and we have received quite a bit of money. Um, we are paying somebody this year because there's a lot of reports we have to do and somebody has to stay on top of that. So the money that we get from donations will pay for adult meals that bring the children because we can't turn those in and they will pay for the director of this program and any charges that we can't send through to the state. So, and right? Kyle is directing it, right? Yes. <clears throat> and the people in the kitchen are very, they're saying he does a great job. He's very helpful. And um, he takes it seriously. And I'm very happy to have somebody <coughs> besides me that's willing to do it. So it's going well. And we will also take donations of paper plates and napkins and things like that. Or if you want to bake, you guys, and bring something, that'd be good, too. <laughs> Why not fry? Why well, just bake? Fry? Why can we fry something and bring it? What does no, it have to be baked? No, we can't serve fried. We have to follow health. <laughs> Healthy food. Anybody put some butter? 
<laughs> Even if it's good butter. <laughs> we do um, make things with butter. Are they getting to the street repairs, like the one in front of State Farm? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, you mean the water leak yeah. situation? The street repairs. Yeah, I, I know that that's one of the things that's, that's supposed to be bad. going over in the next month is concrete purchases. Because that'll all be conjoined. All those are done together because of concrete purchases. I never used they to do. hear them go by, but I hear them go by now. It goes clunk. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And then the one by the water tower. Yep, yeah, that one. They're that one. That now. So they've got a lot, though, guys. I know they were cutting for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got. Today, yeah, I think so. Formed up, ready. Right. Yeah, they've got yeah. the you a lot. things so you can't go on that street right now. So, are we going to be doing something about that manhole on Main and South Fifth, okay. where it's sunk way down mm -hmm. in, fills up with water, and, yeah. and the Dollar that's General also intersection? intersection? Yeah, that's actually being part of that's being contracted. But yeah, okay. it's, I know it's in works too. Great. Okay. It's all part of his no, summer schedule. It's all okay. part of his summer schedule. If there's nothing else, I'd move for. Take motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion has been made second to adjourn. Call for a vote. Councilperson Perry? Yes. Hansen? Yes. McGinty? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Brenny? Yes. Motion carried.